Good afternoon, dear students. I'm glad to read you here one more lecture. Today it will be lecture for third year students uh, from discipline Propedeptics of Internal Medicine. I hope everyone is health, everyone is staying in your apartment and to use this home time with maximal benefit. As usual, I ask you to leave under the lecture of uh, in YouTube your name and your group. And I'll download the link for this lecture in our closed Facebook group. Uh, and I have one more interesting activity for you for today. During the lecture, it will be nine different multiple choice questions from USMLE about today's uh, topic. And at home, you can answer for this question. You can uh, write and maybe discuss uh, your options, your correct options in Facebook under the video and uh, uh, the correct answers, my correct answers, I'll show you in the next lecture. Okay, let's start our work. Our today's topic it is signs and symptoms of urinary system diseases and I'm uh, gonna to make accents on urinary syndrome, nephrotic syndrome, nephritic syndrome, urinary tract obstruction syndrome and hypertensive syndrome. Okay, what our today's plan? It is importance or value of human kidney. It is urinary system diseases, syndromes like urinary syndrome, nephrotic syndrome, anephritic syndrome, urinary tract obstruction syndrome, and hypertensive syndrome. I'm gonna, going to remind you how uh, do kidneys work and what primary functions and what purpose of uh, investigation of patient. It is uh, some characteristics in history taking and patient's examination. It is spectrum of urinary system diseases and urinary system diseases symptoms. One more time. Uh, it can be a huge number of uh, different uh, disease and disorders in nephrology, in signs that uh, describe different urinary tract disorders. Uh, and to stop a little bit on each of these diseases, it may be too difficult, too uh, much information, and not good for understanding. First of all, you should understand most of these uh, diseases uh, have the same symptoms symptoms and the same processes in organism. That's why we usually combine them in several main syndromes. And today I'm going to discuss with you these main syndromes. Uh, each syndrome have uh, uh, its own pathological process, its own symptoms, uh, and understanding of syndrome give you possibility not to learn mechanically each of huge number of disease and just understand what syn a syndrome uh, is usual for what number of disease. That's why uh, the most of our today's lecture about syndromes and investigation of patient with uh, kidney and urine disorders. Uh, first of all, importance. What's the value of human kidney? In human kidney, it is uh, human kidney. It is body's filter. You know about it from physiology. It cleans nearly 180 liters of liquid per day, retaining the good stuff in organism and expelling the bad. Most fortunately, humans are born with two kidneys. If one of them becomes damaged, the other one can pick up the slack. If both kidney fails, however, body will be filled with harmful toxins. Without medical intervention, such patients will die within several weeks. And in the photo, you see uh, these uh, medical interventions. We name it artificial kidney or hemodialysis. And let's start from the simplest syndrome, we name it urinary syndrome. Yes, what you have to know about it? All that you have to know that it is quantitative and qualitative changes in urine. All changes that you can find in urine, all not normal uh, things, it is microscopical, chemical, physical analysis, all changes uh, we can name urine syndrome, that's all. One more time. 
it manifests with changes in volume and composition of urine output. Ch it can be changes with rhythm of urinary excretion, changes in volume and composition of blood secondary to urine changes. All of them it is urinary syndrome. That's all. And a little bit more difficult, it is nephrotic syndrome. What is nephrotic syndrome? Let's give definition. It is clinical and laboratory syndrome characterized by massive proteinuria, which lead to hypoproteinemia, or especially hypoalbuminemia. Uh, it usually connected with hyperlipidemia and pitting edema in result from increasing permeability of glomerular basement membrane to plasma protein. Okay, next slide. Criteria of nephrotic syndrome. It is hematuria. Uh, hematuria we name red blood cells in urine and it can be cross hematuria. Uh, it is hypertension, yes, it is usual criteria of hypertension when blood pressure are higher than 140 for systolic and higher than 90 for diastolic. It can be azotemia, it is uh, due to renal insufficiency, it can be increased levels of uh, serum, uh, serum proteins and creatinine. And it can be hypocomplementemia. It is decreased level of main component of complement C3. Uh, types of nephrotic syndrome. In um, uh, nearly 90% of all cases, it is idiopathic nephrotic syndrome. What it means, we can't find any cause of a manifestation of nephrotic syndrome. It with unknown cause, we name it idiopathic. In 10% in all adults, it is secondary to some other disorders. The most often of them, it is anaphylactoid purpura, it is systemic lupus erythematosus, it is uh, infection of hepatitis B virus. And uh, nephrotic syndrome can be congenital. It is very important for small children in pediatrics. Okay, pathophysiology. Yes, it everything from physiology, from pathophysiology. You remember the structural uh, cell of uh, kidney. It is nephron. It contains glomerula that uh, have a glomerular membrane and through this membrane it is filtration of bad chemicals and receiving of everything good. Uh, in glomerular damage it is suffering of this glomerular membrane. First of all, it is increased prem, uh, permeability to proteins that caused protein urea or losing of proteins to urine. For nephrotic syndrome, it usually very massive protein urea, very severe. Uh, it higher than 3.5. It is very important criteria of nephrotic syndrome uh, per day. Uh, losing such massive losing of proteins in urine causing hypoproteinemia because it's losing from the blood. Uh, it results uh, in two ways. First one, it is decreased plasma oncotic pressure. By the difference of oncotic pressure, water from the blood grows to peripheral tissues and it leads to severe peripheral edema. And another one, it is compensatory synthesis of proteins by liver that secondary lead to hyperlipidemia. Uh, degrees of protein amy. it can be mild, moderate and severe, mild less than uh, 0 0.5 gram per uh, meter in square per day, moderate from 0 0.5 till 2 and severe more than 2. For nephrotic it most usual severe protein urea. Uh, uh, moreover, protein urea can be selective and non-selective. What it means? Uh, in most cases, uh, 
proteins with low molecular weight, such as albumin, can uh, are extracted more rapidly than protein with high molecular weight, for example, globulin. That's why uh, organism loses first of all albumins, uh, and we name it selective uh, protein urea. If both of them, as low molecular weight albumins, as high molecular weight globulins are lost in urine, we name it non-selective protein urea. Symptoms of nephrotic syndrome. It is edema. It can be varying degrees from local edema. Mostly it is edema of face, facial edema. Edema around eyes, we name a uh, symptom periorbital swelling. Uh, it can be a uh, low extremitas edema and in more severe cases it can be generalized edema that we name anasarca. In male patients it can be isolated edema of penis and scrotum. Other clinical symptoms of nephrotic syndrome. It is fatigue, lethargy, loss of appetite, nausea, vomiting, abdominal pain, diarrhea, body weight increase or decrease sometimes, uh, urine output uh, decrease and pleural effusion that can lead to respiratory distress. Diagnosis of nephrotic syndrome. Yes, it is blood test. Uh, it have to be serum protein, usually more than 5.5, albumin less than 2.5, and it will be increased cholesterol level more than 220 milligrams per deciliter. In urine test, it will be protein urea, we told more than 3.5 grams per day. It will be oligurea, uh, this term, in this term, we named uh, decreasing a day volume of excreting urine. And oligurea are uh, most usual for stage of edema formation. It can be microscopic hematuria in 20% of all cases and large number of hyaline casts. Uh, moreover, we have to do differential diagnosis of generalized edema. For patients with nephrotic syndrome, we have to exclude all other causes of uh, generalized edema. Okay, what main is nephrotic syndrome? Uh, you see that uh, two most important syndromes in uh, uh, nephrology, they differ just in one letter. Yes, and here it is letter O, or nephrotic syndrome. All main symptoms uh, contain a uh, uh, letter O for this syndrome. First, it is massive protein urea. It is hypoprotein amia, or peeling out albumin. Yes, we talk about it. It is edema, oncotic pressure in the blood uh, goes down, that lead to edema. It is hypercholesterolemia, uh, it is, will be a hyperlipidemia and even it can be hyperlipiduria. It is hypercoagulable state, yes, it is a risk of thrombotic and thromboembolic complications. And I promise you, you may assemble a test. Uh, first uh, test is uh, about nephrotic syndrome. A seven-year-old male suffers from generalized edema. Urine protect protein excretion is 5.2 grams over 24 hours, and serum analysis reveals hyperlipidemia. Patient responds to treatment with prednisone, and eight weeks later, his urine does not contain measurable protein. If kidney biopsy had been performed while the patient's condition was pathologic, which of the following would you expect to find upon glomerular electron microscopy? First option, uh, effacement of podocyte food processes. Second, subepithelial spike and dome deposits. Third, subepithelial humps. Fourth, thin glomerular, glomerular basement membrane and fifth, subendothelial thickening. Test 2 for nephrotic syndrome. 
a 57 year old female visit her primary care physician with two plus pitting edema yes significant edema in her legs she takes no medications and does not use alcohol tobacco or illicit drugs 4.5 grams of protein are collected during 24-hour urine excretion. A kidney biopsy is obtained. Examination with light microscopy shows diffuse thickening of glomerular basement membrane. Electron microscopy shows subepithelial spike and dome deposits. Which of the following is the most likely diagnosis for this patient? First, minimal change disease. Second, post infection glomerulonephritis. Third, focal segmental glomerulosclerosis. Fourth, rapidly progressive glomerulonephritis. Fifth, membranous glomerulopathy. And one more test. A six year old girl presents to your clinic two weeks after receiving a routine immunization in preparation for a trip overseas. Periorbital edema is present on exam and 24-hour urine collection shows excretion of 4.3 grams of protein per day. Which pathological change would uh, likely be seen on microscopy? First, it is linear immunoglobulin G deposition on light microscopy. Two, immunoglobulin A immune complexes in the mesangium on electron microscopy. Third, trump track appearance on light microscopy. Next, subepithelial deposits with spike and dome appearance on electron microscopy. And fifth, podocytes effacement of on electron microscopy. And next syndrome for today, it is nephritic syndrome. What is this? It is clinical and laboratory syndrome associated with disorders affecting the kidneys, more specifically glomerular structures, and characterized by having a thin glomerular basement membrane and small pores in the podocytes of the glomerulus, large enough to permit proteins, proteinuria, and red blood cells, hematuria, to pass into the urine. Criteria, it is hematuria with red blood cells cast present in urine. Uh, next criteria, it is protein urea, but here important, less than 3.5 grams per liter. It is main differential sign between nephrotic syndrome and nephritic syndrome. It is level of daily protein urea. More than 3.5 nephrotic, less than 3.5 nephritic. Moreover, for nephritic syndrome, very usual hypertension, uh, uremia due to retention of waste products, and it can be variable renal insufficiency with azotemia oliguria. Oliguria, I told you, it is low urine output. It is less than 400 milliliters per day. Types of nephritic syndrome, mostly uh, by the cause, it can be post-streptococcal glomerulonephritis and it can be crescenic glomerulonephritis or rapidly progressive glomerulonephritis. And nephritic syndrome, letter I. It characterized by inflammation and both these words contain letter I. That's why nephritic inflammation. For uh, better uh, learning, you can use uh, mnemonic pharaoh. Uh, by the letters P, it's protein urea, hematuria, A, azotemia, or elevated blood, uh, blood nitrogen levels, R, it is red blood cells cuts, E, one more time, it is anti streptolysine O titrus if it post streptococcal infection. O, it's oliguria, H, it's hypertension. That's why, one more time for you, nephritic pharaoh, nephritic pharaoh, try to remember. And USML, it test about nephritic syndrome. It is test four for you. 
uh, multiple patients present to your office with hematuria following an outbreak of group A streptococcus. Biopsy reveals that all of the patients have the same disease, characterized by large hypercellular glomeruli with neutrophile infiltration. Which patients have the best prognosis? First patient, 65-year-old nulliparous woman. Second, 50-year-old man with a history of strep infection. Eight, uh, third, 8-year-old boy who undergoes no any treatment. Fourth, 38-year-old man with sickle cell treat. And fifth, 18-year-old man treated with corticosteroids. Test 5 about nephritic syndrome 2. Its 10-year-old boy presents to your office with cola color urine and periorbital edema. His mother is extremely concerned, especially given that her son has been entirely healthy except for a sore throat a few weeks ago. Which of the following would be least be attentive, least likely to observe on kidney biopsy in this patient? First, lumpy bumpy appearance on immunofluorescence. Second, subepithelial electron dense deposits on electron microscopy. Third, polyclonal immunoglobulin G and complement deposition on immunofluorescence. Fourth, linear immunoglobulin G deposition along the basement membrane on immunofluorescence. And last one, large hypercellular glomeruli in light microscopy. Test 6. A 6-year-old boy presents to your office with hematuria. Two weeks ago, a patient had symptoms of sore throat and fever. Although a physical examination is unremarkable, laboratory results show a decreased serum complement level and elevated anti-DNA B titers. Which of the following would be most expect to see on renal biopsy? First, large hypercellular glomeruli on light microscopy. Second, polyclonal immunoglobulin A deposition on immunofluorescence. Third one, immune complex deposits with a spike and dome appearance on electron microscopy. Uh, fourth, wire looping and hyaline thrombi on light microscopy. Fifth, antibodies to GBM resulting in linear immunofluorescence pattern. And one more test about nephritic syndrome. It's test 7. A 21-year-old male presents to your office with hematuria three days after onset of productive cough and fever. Following renal biopsy, immunofluorescence show granular immunoglobulin A deposits in glomerular, glomerular mesangium. Which of the following do you suspect in this patient? First, lipoid nephrosis. Second, Berger disease. Third, post-streptococcal glomerulonephritis. Fourth, a systemic lupus erythematosus. And fifth, a hip infection. Okay, next syndrome for today it is syndrome of urinary tract obstruction. Urinary tract obstruction can occur at any point of urinary tract, from the kidneys to the urethral meatus. It can be developed secondary to calculi, to tumors, strictures, anatomical abnormalities, or functional abnormalities. Obstructive uropathy can result in pain, urinary tract infections, loss of renal function, or possibly sepsis or even death. Symptoms of Urinary tract obstruction are typified by the symptoms of urethral stricture or urethral or renal stone by the level where is obstruction. The principal complaints are pain in the flank, it's radiating along the course of the urethral, gross total hematuria, it can be uh, gastrointestinal symptoms, chills, fever, burning on urination, and cloudy urine with onset of infection.
which is the common consequence of obstruction of vesicular urethral reflux. Uh, what else? Uh, another symptomatic. It can be nausea, vomiting, loss of weight and strength, a pallor are due to uremia, secondary to bilateral hydronephrosis, possible just uremia, possible just when it blocked to both kidneys, two sides. Uh, it can be anemia, leukocytosis, microscopic uh, hematuria in lab analysis, in ureter, in early stages, intravesical pressure is normal. Later, added stretch effect at the lower end of the ureter induce further hydroureteronephrosis. Finally, the ureteral wall becomes attenuated. Uh, typified by the symptoms, if it mid tract in the middle. Uh, ureteral structure, benign prostatic hyperplasia, neurogenic bladder, it is abnormal, uh, abnormal uh, innervation of uh, bladder and due to its atonia of it, and tumor of the bladder involving vesical neck. Symptoms. It is hesitancy in starting urination, less net force and size of the stream, and terminal dribbling. Hematuria, which may be partial. It can be cloudy urine due to complicating infection. It, is, uh, it can be acute urinary retention, anemia, leukocytosis, microscopic hematuria. Stages. Uh, it can be stages of compensation and decompensation in mid-urinary tract obstruction. In compensation, the bladder musculature becomes hypertrophied. It is thickened and may be double or tr even triple. Uh, hypertrophied muscle can be seen endoscopically. And after it, it is imposed, imposed with secondary infection. In stage of decompensation, large obstructing gland can be palpated rectally and observed cystoscopically, or even during palpation of lower part of abdomen you can find this structure. Uh, it can appear as a mild obstruction cystoscopically. You see picture here and uh, by coloration of uh, uretra, you see the narrowing in the upper part. Okay, uh, lower tract obstruction. The principal systems are the same with mid part. It is hesitancy in starting urination, less in force and signs of stream, terminal dribbling, hematuria, uh, initially uh, with uh, stricture or total with prostatic obstruction or vesicular tumor, cloudy urine, acute urinary retention. Laboratory is anemia, leukocytosis, microscopic hematuria. Obstruction in this case in lower tract uh, cause hydrostatic pressure proximally upper than obstruction. It is dilation of urethra. After it, it goes uh, that wall of urethra becomes more thin. It f uh, can form diverticle and uh, infection urine and plus urinary extravasation due to inflammation can lead to formation of periuretral abscess. Typified by the symptom of urethral structure, benign prostatic hyperplasia, neurogenic bladder, tumor of bladder involving vesical neck. And test 8 for you about urinary tract obstruction syndrome. A 45-year-old male presents with three-day history of right-sided flank pain due to lodged urethral stone. What changes would be expected to be seen at the level of glomerular filtration? Uh, in, uh, first option, increase in glomerular capillary oncotic pressure. Second, increase in Bowman space capillary oncotic pressure. Third, increase in Bowman space hydrostatic pressure. Fourth, increase in filtration fraction. Five, no change in filtration fraction. Uh, test 9. 
a 72-year-old male presents to his primary care physician uh, with urinary hesitancy and urinary dribbling that began six weeks ago and has gradually worsened. Rectal exam reveals a markedly enlarged prostate. CT scan demonstrates dilated ureters and renal pelvises. Which of the following likely accounts for the CT scan's results? First option, ureteral obstruction. Second, autosomal dominant polycystic kidney disease. Third, prerenal azotemia. Fourth, elevated serum of a prostate-specific antigen and multiple endocrine neoplasia type 1. It was the last test for today. I waiting for your options in Facebook or if you want you can mark for you individually your correct options and next lecture I explain you what correct answer for these nine questions. Next syndrome for today it is hypertensive syndrome. Uh, you, uh, as usual, hypertension, the uh, criteria for hypertension, it is elevated blood pressure more than 140 by 90 millimeters hydrargyl. Uh, in case when it caused uh, by disorders of kidney, we name it renal or renal vascular hypertension. And most often it caused by narrowing in the arteries that deliver blood to the kidney. Uh, we name it renal artery stenosis. At the picture you see that lower arrow show you narrowing uh, of uh, kidney artery. When the kidneys receive low blood flow, they respond by releasing hormones uh, that stimulate the body to retain sodium and water. Blood vessels fill with additional fluid uh, and blood pressure increase. Uh, these hormones we name, it is a whole system of hormones that can be manifested as started by the kidneys. Uh, it is a uh, renin angiotensin aldosterone system. Hope you know about it. The narrowing of one or both renal arteries it is the most often uh, caused by atherosclerosis or hardening of arteries. Symptoms. It is usual symptoms of hypertension. It is headache, confusion, blurred or double vision, bloody pink colored urine. It is often nosebleeds. Uh, bruits over affected renal artery. Hypertension can cause in uh, from its side chronic kidney disease. That's why we have a pathological round that kidney cause kidney problem cause hypertension, hypertension uh, worsening kidneys problem and uh, make the kidney insufficiency and chronic kidney disease. Okay, let's remind primary function for understanding all pathological processes, diagnosing it and uh, in future treatment of it, you should remember primary functions of urinary system. It is maintaining of homeostasis, they regulate fluids and electrolytes, eliminate waste products, they maintain blood pressure through the renin angiotensin aldosterone system. They involved with red blood cells production uh, due to hormone erythropoietin and they involved in bone metabolism. What the purpose of uh, patient's investigation if you suspect some urinary drug disorders. It is general evaluation of health, as usual. It is diagnosis of disease or disorders of the kidneys or urinary tract. It is diagnosis of other, of other systemic diseases that affect kidney function. Additionally, it is a very important uh, monitoring for patient with diabetes mellitus. It is obligatory monitoring and investigation. And it is a very good way for screening of drug toxicity through the uh, urine function, especially if patient use sulfonamylamides or aminoglycoside drugs. What uh, have we do in history taking and patients interviewing? It is gathering of information, it patient's narrative, it is biomedical perspective, 
psychological perspective and context. All of it we should discuss, we should talk with your patients. Uh, short reminding of uh, difference in anatomy uh, in clinical examination, the difference of urinary tract between male and female patients. Hope you remember these differences. And it is kidney skeletotopy. You see position of kidneys in anterior view and in posterior view. In clinical examination, we can make palpation of kidney. Sometimes is in, it is impossible. In very obese patients, in patients with metaurism, uh, in patients uh, with ascites, for example, it sometimes it's impossible. But for usual, uh, for usual patient, it's very uh, it's normal practice to palpate kidneys. And uh, if you will try, you will find kidneys. Uh, usually it is bimanual palpation when your left hand you put on the back of the patient in uh, and with right hand and in anterior wall you try to press and find position of kidney remembering a, a previous slide with uh, position normal anatomic position of kidneys. Uh, Okay, uh, kidney pain localization, you see that it usually back pain, it can be unilateral or bilateral pain uh, in the uh, costal angles uh, at the back. And additionally by percussion, uh, we name it Murphy sign, uh, it can be painful that told you about some kidney problems. Okay, inspection of patient with kidney problems. Uh, it is evaluation of general state of health. And here you can find fatigue, lethargy, diminished alertness, skin paler, yellow-gray, excoriations, changes in turgor, bruises, texture. Usually in patient with kidney problems, it is raw, dry skin. Mouth. It can be stomatitis and ammonia breath. Uh, face and extremities, it can be generalized and peripheral edema, it can be bladder distension, masses and enlarged kidney. Uh, in uh, examination of abdomen, you can see that abdominal contour for middle mass in lower abdomen if it is cystic enlargement or it can be unilateral mass if it is kidney enlargement. Weight. It can be weight gain most often secondary to edema. And sometimes it can be weight loose and muscle wasting in patient with severe renal failure. Uh, percussion, palpation and auscultation of patients. Uh, kidney percussion to detect areas of tenderness and costal vertebral test. Uh, and we can make palpation to determine contour of kidney, size of kidney and tenderness during palpation. Presence of tenderness and pain indicates that, kidney, uh, that it is kidney infection or polycystic, uh, polycystic kidney disease. Uh, percussion of bladder. Uh, we usually do in area over the bladder nearly 5 cm above the symphysis pubis. To detect difference in sounds, percussion towards the base of bladder. Uh, we should do inspection of retral meatus for swelling, for discharge and inflammation. And we can do auscultation. It is very informative uh, uh, in auscultation of abdominal aorta and renal arteries. They are auscultated for bruits which indicates impaired blood flow to the kidneys and you can suspect uh, kidney artery stenosis. 
Okay, in and uh, in uh, examination on the first place, it is laboratory examination, which is the most important things in all urinary uh, tract problems. Yes, it is blood test, and what is the most important? It is urine tests. What about blood? Here important for us, it is level of serum creatinine. Normally, it is from 0 0.5 to 1.2 milligrams per deciliter. In a kidney problems, it is a no filtration of creatinine in urine. That's why it can be elevating it in blood. Uh, moreover, it is blood urea nitrogen, uh, normal level from 10 to 20 milligrams per deciliter. And one more sign, it is a relation between a nitrogen and creatinine ratio. Normally, it's from 12 to 1 to uh, 20 to 1 mass. Uh, in some kidney disorders, this relation is uh, changed too. And what about urine test? First of all, what kind of test it can be? It is usual simple urine analysis. It is urine for culture and sensitivity. It is composite uh, urine collection. Most often during 24 hours we collect the urines. Uh, it is clear creatinine clearance test. It is used to estimate glomerular filtration rate. It is urine electrolytes and detecting of osmolarity as plasma as urine. Okay, glomerular filtration rate. It is a test of how much the kidneys are filtrating. Normally, it's uh, nearly uh, 100 milliliters per minute. What it means? It means that uh, kidneys are removing all creatinine found in 100 milliliters of blood every minute of life of this person. Uh, you can measure GFR by test. We inject in a tiny amount of radioactive substance and measure how quickly it disappears from the blood or appears in urine. And it's calculating like GFR or glomerular filtration rate. Uh, uh, EGFR. It's using blood test, age, sex, and sometimes other information for more simple mathematical calculation of GFR by the formula MDRD. It is modification of diet and renal disease equation. This is uh, not as good as previous test mission, not as correct, but it's much simpler, cheaper, not invasive for patient and requires just one blood test for creatinine. A creatinine clearance, it is blood creatinine measurements by collecting of urine for 24 hours and measuring how much creatinine is in the urine and at the same time is finding how much the creatinine in the blood and by this relation we detect creatinine clearance if any urine produced during 24 hours is not collected uh, the result can't be accurate just full collection okay and what formulas we can use for more simple detecting yes uh, formulas that we discuss it is mdrd modification renal uh, diet in renal disease for gfr uh, it use uh, level of serum creatinine age uh, gender and race of the patient and by this formula they are valuable online they are available in smartphone uh, in smartphone programs automatically to calculate level of gfr and we have a little bit simpler but still usable formula uh, it is cockroft gold equation in fact it gives creatinine clearance this formula even simpler you can calculate even with pencil and paper but it available online calculators too it use age uh, lean body weight uh, gender and level of serum creatinine and that's so it's much more simpler uh, the normal for both of them it easy to remember it's nearly hundred 
And according to GFR, we uh, can detect is it present abnormal uh, filtration function of kidneys, uh, and if it present, what stage of chronic kidney disease by GFR uh, have this patient? Uh, okay, stage A. It is normal level of G A E G F R more than ninety, but it present some signs of damage. Uh, of kidney uh, structure or some kidney symptomatic. Stage 2, it is EGFR from 60 to 89. We name it mild decrease in GFR. Stage 3, we divide it on 3A and 3B. It goes from 30 till 59. It is moderate decrease in GFR. Stage 4, it is severe decrease in GFR when it uh, measured from 15 to 29. And stage 5, it is kidney failure uh, when GFR less than 15. And one more specific stage, it is stage 5D when uh, GFR less than 10. It is indication for emergent dialysis for this patient. Urea analysis from it start from microscopic examination from examination by your arms and first thing that you can evaluate it is color of urine as you can see in this picture it can be very different colors. Okay, collection of urine uh, specimens. It can be a little bit different. The most common it is first weighted morning urine. Uh, that can be collected and sent uh, to laboratory for analysis. Uh, in emergent cases, uh, we can use random uh, urine uh, test. It's less specific, less informative, but in some emergent case it is uh, usable too. And it can be clean catch and midstream urine analysis. It is important for your uh, urine culture. Uh, you can be at, uh, have to be attentive uh, for urine culture and sensitivity analysis. It needs to be examined within one hour from collection till analysis. Uh, it has to be no more than one hour. Okay, and urine specimen examination. Yes, when we take collect this urine, uh, send it to the laboratory, what types of analysis we can do? It is physical examination for appearance, volume and specific gravity. It is chemical examination, microscopic examination, urine for culture and sensitivity. Okay, physical appearance. Yes, first of all, it is color. Normally, it is from pack, uh, pale to dark yellow. It caused uh, by such chemicals that we name urochrome. It colorate urine in its yellow color. In abnormal case, uh, it can be changes in color. Some drug can cause color of urine. Uh, red urine is the most often problem. Uh, it is result mostly of hematuria. Moreover, it can be uh, due to hemoglobin urea, myoglobin urea, pseudo urea. We will discuss more about it. And sometimes we see yellow brown or green brown urine. It possible in presence of bilirubin in urine in obstructive jaundice. Clarity uh, in physical appearance of urine. Uh, in normally it is clear. Uh, in abnormal it can be cloudy. This cloudiness can be caused by crystals or non-pathological salts, by phosphates, carbonates in alkaline urine, by uric acid in acidic urine, and it can be caused by various cellular elements when it is a lot of leukocytes red blood cells and epithelial cells in urine it can be cloudy too uh, red urine let's talk more about it yes mostly we talk that it is uh, a result of hematuria it can be macroscopic or visible it can be microscopic that not visible but presence of erythrocytes in a urine test let's discuss a microscopic hematuria uh, it is uh, can be urinary tract source at any level 
from urethra, bladder, prostate, ureter or kidney. And it can be non-urinary tract source, for example, bleeding from vagina, anus or rectum. It can be pseudohematuria. What is that? It when uh, urine is red color but no presence of hematuria. It can be in myoglobinuria, hemoglobinuria, phenolstalin, laxatives, phenotiazines, porphyria, rifampin, pyridium, bilirubinuria, phenytoin, uh, red diaper syndrome, and uh, after overeating of some foods, for example, beets, blackberries, and rhubarb. Uh, causes of asymptomatic gross hematuria. It very often asymptomatic. It, it is dangerous sign. You should remember about acute cystitis. Very very important because often bladder cancer, asymptomatic hematuria. First uh, first of all is very dangerous for suspicion of bladder cancer. Morphine. It can be benign due to prostatic hyperplasia. Uh, nephrolithiasis, benign essential hematuria, prostatitis, renal cancer, pyelonephritis, prostate cancer, and urethral strictures. Uh, volume of urine. Normal adult volume of urine it is from uh, for uh, hundreds to two thousands milliliters per twenty four hours. Uh, from uh, 400 milliliters till 2 liters per day. Increase overage, we name polyuria, it is more than 2000 milliliters per day. It can be physiological and pathological. Physiological, it is uh, increased water intake, it can be caused by some drugs and intravenous solutions. Pathological polyuria. It caused of most often by chronic kidney disease, by diabetes mellitus and diabetes insipidus. And decreased uh, overage, we named oliguria when it is decreased less than 400 milliliters. And it can be anuria or absence of urine, but it's not laboratory complete absence. It is daily excretion of urine less than 100 milliliters. Uh, causes of uh, oliguria and anuria decreased urine volume. They can be pre-renal uh, because of hemorrhage, because of dehydration and congestive heart failure most often. It can be renal parenchymal disease like acute tubular necrosis and chronic renal failure. And it can be post-renal causes like obstructions of urinary tract, maybe stones or carcinoma or other cause obstruction. Specific gravity, what the sign is it? It is density of urine, compares the density of urine to density of water. Normal overage in adults from 1.001 to 1.040. Uh, increased density, increased specific gravity is uh, specific for dehydration, fever, vomiting, diarrhea, diabetes mellitus, other glucosuria, congestive heart failure, syndrome of inappropriate antidiuretic hormone secretion and adrenal insufficiency. And decreased specific gravity, uh, it is usual for diabetes insipidus. Uh, in chemical analysis, first of all, we detect urine pH. Normal level is very wide from 5 to 9, depends on diet of this person. Uh, increased pH, it alkaline urine can be due to drugs, especially sodium bicarbonates. Classic renal tubular acidosis, alkalosis. Alkalosis, you remember, can be metabolic or respiratory. Uh, and decreased pH uh, uh, or acid urine can be due to drugs, especially containing ammonium chloride, and general acidosis that can be metabolic and respiratory too. 
uh, moreover in chemical examination we check level of proteins normal level of proteins is less than 150 milligrams per day it is a very very small number it is number on daily urine collection and if you uh, take one portion collect one portion of urine for the test it will be absence have to be absence of protein at all or small small even not uh, measurable number of protein higher uh, level of protein in urine more than 150 milligrams per 24 hour we name protein urea protein urea can be heavy more than four grams per day moderate from one to four grams per day and minimal less than one gram per day uh, moreover, we can detect microalbuminuria. In the first part of lecture, we discussed that mostly organisms uh, lose in this case albumin, like smaller proteins. Uh, that's why, uh, first of all, it will be albuminuria and especially microalbuminuria. The normal range for it uh, is from uh, 30 to 300 milligrams per day. Uh, it can be caused by glomerul glomerular causes like glomerular disease damage, glomerular basement membrane, uh, but tubular function in this case is normal. It will be with selective protein urea, heavy protein urea, uh, usually usual for acute glomerular nephritis. And it can be tubular causes when renal tubular disease damage tubular function, but glomerular function is absolutely normal. Uh, it leads to moderate usually protein urea and uh, usual for P yellow nephritis. Uh, moreover, protein urea can be due to overflow and it can be functional and it can be extra renal cause. Uh, glucose normally negative in urine, it can be positive in diabetes mellitus, Cushing syndrome, renal tubular dysfunction. Ketones normally negative too. Uh, their presence says you about diabetic, non-diabetic patient in hyperemesis uh, in pregnancy, very usual sign, and patients with vomiting and diarrhea, very usual too. Occult blood, normally negative. Uh, bilirubin urobilinogen normally negative too. Uh, their presence says you about obstructive jaundice. Nitrites are normally negative. Uh, if they are positive, it says you about presence of bacterial infection in urine. And leukocyte esterase uh, says you about bacterial fungal parasitic infection, about presence of tumor or nephritis. Here you see pictures with, with different urine specimen examination. First picture uh, it is a uh, test for culture and sensitivity and you see in pink color cultures of some bacteria and all others it is microscopic examination for different uh, cells like red blood cells, white blood cells, epithelial cells. You can see bacteria, casts uh, and other microscopic changes. Okay, if uh, the main diagnosis, uh, main four diagnosis, it is laboratory examination, uh, visualization or instrumental examination, uh, we usually do for patients too. And here the most important, the ultrasonography, ultrasound investigation. Usually we use BMOD scan of kidneys. Additionally, we can do Doppler flow examination of renal vessels or duplex ultrasound scanning. Uh, more of it, we can do radiographic examinations of kidneys or retral bladder. Uh, additional X-ray uh, tests, it is intravenous orography, computer tomography, cystography, and cysto or retrography. And we can do other diagnostic tests, renal arteriography or angiography. Uh, renal biopsy, renography or kidney scan, and magnetic resonance imaging or MRI. 
Here you see picture from sonography. It is sonography of kidney. You can visualize kidney with its structures, uh, check position, measure sizes, measure structures. And in color, as usual, I showed you in previous lecture, in red and blue color, it is a uh, flow of urine or blood flow, depending on position. Uh, we use for it uh, Doppler examination. Here you see picture with renal arteriography. Uh, when we inject some uh, contrast in blood flow, and here you see the contrastic visualization of abdominal aorta and kidney atrus. Here we can visualize atrial stenosis. Here you see uh, urography. It is it is X-ray uh, test. Too, but here contrast we uh, give patient retrograde to urine tract and you see visualization of left urine tract in this patient uh, you see ureter and structure of kidney uh, okay x-ray we can use for visualization of radiolus and strong not all stones can be can be visible on x-ray but some of them vis visible and here you see example of huge bladder calculi or bladder stone if uh, other visualization methods especially sonography is not enough not informative we can additionally use computer tomography uh, for example, here uh, a picture of computer tomography of patient with cystic disease of the kidney and you see cystic structure of both kidneys in this patient. Uh, in some cases, more real, we can use MRI imaging when other tests, CT and X-ray and sonography is not enough. Uh, additional renal scanning we do with uh, technology of positron emission tomography. And here you see picture how to do laparoscopic renal biopsy. Uh, yes, it usually do uh, laparoscopically. We take piece of tissue for morphological examination from the kidney. Uh, usually we uh, combine plain radiography and abdominal computer tomography sometimes when we're not sure about uh, process or causes of this process like for example here in picture a you see by arrows uh, the uh, widened structure of uh, internal part of kidney uh, but we can't understand why they widen it and here uh, we see the same P yellow ectasy uh, in structure of kidney and in black arrow you see small white point it is sign of presence of stone in this kidney okay spectrum of urinary system disease I told you that it can be a lot of different disease but let's name like a least part of them it is congenital abnormalities it is interstitial nephritis it is glomerular nephritis it is cystic kidney disease renal vascular disease nephrotic syndrome renal failure it is infections of the urinary tract obstruction of urinary tract urinary tract calculi and nephrotic Calculosis. It is malignancy of urinary tract, as uh, uh, including uh, cancer of bladder. It is incontinence. And let's collect all symptoms from all syndrome, main symptoms of urinary system diseases. Mostly, it is pain, it is proteinuria, it is azotemia leading to uremia, it is hematuria, urinary casts, hypertension, oliguria or anuria, it is edema, polyuria, renal ure uh, ureteric colic or pain syndrome, it is dysuria, it is renal failure, general symptoms of abnormal renal function. 
Okay, for today that's all. It is all information. Uh, more detailed uh, information about urinary system diseases you will discuss with your practical class teacher in Google Classes. You will uh, uh, receive from them more information and maybe get some tests about it. Under this video on YouTube, I'm waiting for your name and group. If you want to discuss uh, answers for the questions for yourself, uh, I'm waiting for you uh, in Facebook group. Be healthy and goodbye.